Hi, Steve here. Thank you for joining me on the Panoramic Travels YouTube channel. Janet and I went on a South American cruise toward the end of our winter, which was the end of the summer in the Southern Hemisphere. This video is the first in a three-part series. This video will cover our time on the Viking Jupiter. It will include the ship itself, the crew, the onboard entertainment, the lectures, activities, and of course the food. The second video will cover the 18-day cruise from Valparaiso, Chile to Buenos Aires, Argentina and visiting the Falkland Islands and Uruguay along the way. The video will include glaciers, mountains, Chilean fjords, three different penguin colonies, Ushuaia, the southernmost city in the world, sailing around Cape Horn and the Iguazu Falls. And finally, the third video will cover the post-cruise extension, the Gateway to Patagonia. That video will include five days in the magical Patagonia region of Chile and Argentina. The Viking Jupiter had its maiden voyage in 2019. It can accommodate 930 passengers and a 550-person crew. It has 418 staterooms, typically between 225 and 280 square feet. Janet and I have been on two Viking river cruises over the past four years and have now returned from our first Viking ocean cruise. If you want to look it up on the Viking.com website, this cruise is called South America and the Chilean Fjords. We are on the Viking Jupiter with our friends Don and Kim, along with Kim's brother Ross and his wife Nancy. Stick around to the end of this video when I will share a few of the differences I observed between Viking river cruising and ocean cruising. The elevators include information about what's on each deck. The stairs have screens with similar information, including which way to turn to get to the section of the ship you're interested in. Other than the deck your stateroom is on, the decks that you'll spend the most time on are decks 1, 2, and 7. Next, I'll give you a quick overview of all the decks. to have the best senior management team on the high seas. They will always do their very best. They will always go above and beyond to give you the very best experience 
and make some wonderful memories on board. Viking moments are wonderful memories. A uh, very good evening. My name is Fred, and I'm the hotel general manager here on board. I come from Germany. Most of the times, you will find me up on pool deck sipping cocktails. <laughs> Because with this great hotel team, my life is very easy here on board. Welcome on board. Good evening, everyone. My name is Danesh. I'm from India, and I'm the executive on, on board. And welcome you all. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yuri. I'm your restaurant manager on board. And I'm uh, from Ukraine. And of course, I'm the person in charge of making sure you're thoroughly entertained throughout the course of the voyage. So if there is anything that myself or my team can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. But uh, Captain, I think it's now time we charge a glass uh, to our Viking family. That's all of our guests and all of our crew. And uh, in typical, here we go, that one to you there, sir. And in typical, Viking style will finish with a skull. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise those glasses. May the only pain in your life be champagne. Skull! <laughs> My top tip is this. This is the front of the ship, and that is the back of the ship. And it stays that way throughout the duration of the voyage. Yes. Oh, thank you. Everyone, welcome again on board your new home, away from home. I know your wonderful Viking family are going to treat you to some fantastic Viking moments. I know the crew are going to blow you away. Uh, we really do look forward to having you here uh, and welcoming you into our home. show you uh, exactly what it is that they do right now with this fantastic performance. Ladies and gentlemen, put those hands together for your Viking Jubilee vocalist! Okay. I do
You can see the penguins swimming. Wow. It was great there in the first Stanley. So maybe we're, we're all, I think we're all planning on seeing the penguins in Port Stanley. In a Stanley. Thank you very much. They don't have a stir fry. Too much. Too much. glamour that we provide throughout the course uh, of the cruise to keep you entertained uh, because we also feature entertainment of a more scholastic nature. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am blessed to have on board a team of distinguished guest speakers and instructors, some minds of note brought from all over the world to further immerse you in the history, the heritage and the culture of our destinations and I want to introduce them to you all right now. Please, Put those hands together as they do make their way to the stage. All right, well, up first, I do have your Viking resident historian. It's Dr. Robert. I'm Bob Sutton. I um, actually am from the United States. I was I retired several years ago as a chief historian for the National Park Service. And in that position, I learned a lot about history, and I hope to share some of it with you. 
And now we have a great guest lecturer. It is the amazing Howard. Good evening, everyone. My name is Howard Reutman. My job is to provide some other context for some of the places we're going to be. So I talked today about the peoples of Chile and Argentina. And I think I'm going to finish up with talking about Eva Perón and Che Guevara, who's from Argentina, and Pope Francis. Up next, we do have your Viking resident astronomer, it's Dr. Paul. Good evening, I'm here to do something totally different than these guys. They've got dead ease in history, for to know what, 2,000 years? What did it do, 13.8 billion years in 45 minutes? <laughs> Finally, don't forget, Viking Orion and Viking Jupiter are two incredibly rare ships. We have the planetarium upstairs on the decade, some wonderful 3D shows, so I hope you will uh, book and have a look at that. So, looking forward to meeting you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Up next, we do have a lovely workshop host. Uh, it's Vina, over to you. Hello. Uh, I like her captain. I'm another Brit, but I'm also Canadian. I really look forward to being a bird on the Viking and sharing my knowledge with you. Okay, I can see one or two. You're going to nudge your neighbors and say, I can't even draw a stick figure. I can't do art. <laughs> That's not true. The creativity is in the process and not in the product. No one's expecting a masterpiece product from you. What we want you to do is come and have fun. Have a little taster of watercolor and enjoy it. Thank you, Vinny. And uh, now, last but not least, it is your guest lecturer. It's Keith. My name is Keith Newington. I'm married to Vida. I am giving some lectures on photography. And photography is one of the latest creative crafts that has been developed since 1820, 1827. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it again. And uh, keep that round of applause going for your arithmetic as they do make their way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We get a really good sense of what a glacier looks like um, when we hopefully get up pretty close to this glacier. Next one, um, Perito Marino Glacier is um, also, it's not growing, but it's stable. That's very important. I mean, it's harder than you think.
Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to your bucket farewell. Very shortly, all you're going to have to start making your own bed. Cooking your own food. I know, I know, I know. But in all seriousness, uh, I do hope you have experienced uh, what we like to call our Viking moments. Uh, I do hope you have had a magnificent cruise here on board the fine ship, the Viking Jupiter. The wonderful thing about travel is that we broaden our horizons, isn't it? When we travel, we meet new people, we experience new things, we explore new destinations, and along the way we make some wonderful memories that we will treasure forever. And at this part of the voyage, I always like to reflect back to the beginning and think of all of the highlights that I've enjoyed during the voyage. So I would say we started off in Valparaiso, we had a beautiful sail out. There were a few bumpy days, so I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> But exactly, what's a 17 foot wave between friends? And, uh, and then we went into the Chilean fjords and really enjoyed the, uh, the rugged scenery of the Chilean fjords. And then, of course, we saw a glacier, didn't we? Amalia Glacier. I think for me that was one of my highlights. I've been there a number of times. It never gets old. It's always breathtaking each time we go there. And then we went off and we visited Cape Horn. And we also managed to go 360 degrees all the way around Horn Island. And then of course we visited the Falkland Islands. And of course, if you like me, you love nature and wildlife. And I hope you saw some. Did anybody see any whales? Oh, yeah. Any whales? Did you see any seals? Yeah. Sea lions? Or are they the same thing? I don't know. I can never tell the difference, can you? Dolphins. Yeah. And we saw dolphins. And of course, there's a plethora of marine birds as well. Did anyone see a penguin? Anyway, this is uh, where I come to the end of, of my little speech here. Uh, you know, thank you for travelling with us. It's been an absolute pleasure to be your captain. And safe onward travels. Remember, it's never goodbye. It's always farewell. And I look forward to welcoming you all on board again very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Captain. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I was going to make a few comments about the differences between riverboat cruises and ocean cruises. Obviously, when you're on a riverboat cruise, you can see land on both sides most of the time. You're also in a new port every day. On an ocean cruise, there will be days at sea. This 18-day cruise included eight days at sea, but they still make some of them interesting. Viking calls them scenic sailing days, like sailing the Chilean fjords, seeing the Malia Glacier, or sailing around Cape Horn. Another big difference is access to the port city. On a riverboat, you're allowed to leave the ship and go into the city, which is typically right there. On an ocean cruise, the access is greatly reduced. At some ports, the ship might anchor away from the pier. Then you need to take a tender to the pier. Even at ports where the ship is docked on the pier, access to the town is still limited. These are seaports, and many piers are commercial or industrial. There are lots of cranes, shipping containers, forklifts, etc. The passengers sometimes have to take a shuttle bus from the ship to the end of the pier. At that point, there's often a security terminal you need to go through. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments about your river or ocean cruise travels or any questions you might have. 
please subscribe and click on the notify bell so you'll know when the next videos are available.